Hey, how you doing today? Uh, I just finished making another video about the wedding feast. Um, and this is just going to be a really short version of it because I got to the end of it. And I think it's an awesome video. And there's so much to glean out of that video. Um, but you know what? It's also long. And I get on YouTube, people don't want to necessarily stay and have these really long videos. So I'm going to do one a little shorter here. And this is all a follow-up of the bold statement I've made that if the rapture doesn't happen and uh, the rapture and tribulation doesn't start like Rosh Hashanah this year on 2022, then you have to wait to 2029. And um, go and check it out. There's I did three different videos on them, different lengths. You know, the longer ones have more in there, and I may take more rabbit trails. All right, let's take Ibex trails. Rabbits are not clean animals. I mean, they're nice and they're good, and that's not clean. But anyhow, um, so I'm going to make another statement, and I'm not going to make this statement as boldly. Um, and that statement is basically the rapture has to happen before 2930, and it can't go any longer. I know, I know, no. There are some people out there, I can't believe he's saying that because no man knows a day any hour. Ah, no man knows a day any hour. Ah, ah, ah. No, that's not true. That's an idiom for Rosh Hashanah. It refers to um, the wedding feast. It's screaming Rosh Hashanah because that's the day that no man knows the day or the hour. They have to, uh, they have to, they have to, they have to in order for it to start, it's the only new moon feast day. Two witnesses have to see the new moon. If they don't see the new moon, it doesn't start. So no man knows the day or the hour when it actually starts. And you know, the other thing I've been, I got to throw a couple things out there real quick because they're kind of important for understanding scripture. But this one about Rosh Hashanah, no man knows the day or the hour. If you don't understand the idioms and stuff, it's going to be really hard for you. And actually, I left a very, I'm not going to name the group. It was a big Facebook group, lots of people in it. And I got a lot of play on my videos. A lot of people were um, seeing them, asking questions, good conversation. But the, the admin and one of his people there, that they didn't like them because it seems they wanted to disassociate Rosh Hashanah and the rapture. Because their thinking is the rapture is for Gentiles. How can a Jewish feast day have anything to do with it? Well, the feast days are not Jewish. They're gods, Leviticus 23. And the rapture of the church, it doesn't matter. Jew or Gentile, if you belong to God, you go. There is one way to heaven. Yeshua. That's what he said, flat out. And he's talking to a bunch of Jews. See, it doesn't matter, Jew or Gentile. That was the way from the beginning. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the only way to the Father in heaven, whether you are a Jew or a Gentile. This is not something new. This is from the beginning of time. It's important to realize that because a lot of people try to split up prophecy from one way to another. Okay, I said it's going to be a short video, and here I am on this big, long Ibex trail. Sorry about that, but it's important to understand what I'm saying. The other thing I want to get across to you, if you understand Judaism, um, See, a lot of, or if you understand God's calendar, I should say, a lot of people are talking now, I'm hearing, like, there could be this, wait, like, the rapture could happen, and tribulation doesn't happen right away, and you could wait a couple months, three months, whatever. No, you cannot. Most you can wait is 10 days, Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. Why 10 days? Because tribulation is seven years. It's not seven years and 10 days. So you could have a 10-day gap in there. See, well, tribulation is a week of years. You start a week of years at the beginning of the first year. You don't start it six months later. A week of years starts at the beginning of the week, the beginning of the first year on that week of years. It's, like, it's not like, well, there could be a delay in the week this week, and we might not start the week till Wednesday. Or, no, no, we'll start the week, but we'll start it like Sunday at midnight or Sunday at like 5 p.m. It doesn't work that way. And tribulation and rapture happens on Rosh Hashanah. Again, as I said, it's the day that no man knows the day or the hour. It's the last trump. And a twinkling of an eye is evening twilight when two stars of medium strength are visible. See, the Jews have all the keys. Think about that key ring you've got that's got all these keys on. You don't even know what some of the keys are like. Well, the Jews are holding this giant key ring. Oh, you can't even lift it up. It's got all these keys, and they have no clue what those keys go to. And the church looks at everything like it's locked up. Ah, nobody knows the day or the hour. Ah, nobody knows the day or the hour. Okay, they look at everything like it's locked up. And it's the Messianics that are that are uh, 
opening up stuff. I want to give a plug to Wayne Davis, Creekside Messianic, John 1415.org. He is not a prophecy teacher. He is a Messianic Bible teacher going through the, the Bible, book, chapter, verse. When he hits prophecy, oh my goodness, he hits it. Mind-blowing. All straight from Scripture. Well, Jewish idioms thrown in or Jewish context thrown in. So anyhow, I made this bold statement that if the rapture doesn't happen by 2022 on Rosh Hashanah, we had to wait till 2029. And this has to do with the wedding feast. The story of the wedding feast, basically, and I've heard different versions, and this is the best I can come up with. Um, the groom comes and pays a price. Um, the groom comes to the father of the bride and pays a price. The ketubah. It's a wedding contract. And um, they negotiate the price. Yeshua offered his life. You don't get any better than that. You can't pay a bigger price than that. Anybody can. For God and Abba to offer his life for us, wow. That's awesome. Don't waste it. Anyhow, so he would offer a price, and then he then the groom would knock that, go, go down the hallway and knock on the door. Um, and um, if, if, the, if the bride would open up the door and let him in, they'd have a meal, bread and wine. And she's accepting the betrothal. They're married. They're not going to consummate that marriage, but they're married legally. Just like, you know, Joseph and Mary at that time, they're married, but they hadn't had sex. They hadn't consummated it. Um, and then he would go back and think about this. Um, the tail end of Revelation 3, knock on the door. If, and behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if you open the door and let me in, I'll come in and we'll have a meal together. Okay, day version. I'm not going to all the scriptures. I'm trying to make this short. If you want to know more, go to the longer version of this. So then he would go back to his father's house and build a wedding chamber on his father's house. You know, and they talk about room. In my father's house, there are many rooms. It's in John. Um, and I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, you know, I'll surely come back to get you. That's all wedding talk. They're talking about the wedding. They're talking, and they're kind of confused, like, huh, what does that mean? Uh, Philip, particularly. But it's a wedding chamber. See, if the groom's going to go away and prepare a place for him, they're already married. He's going to come back and get his bride. That's what that talk is about. Um, Paul mentioned that the, uh, the I'm going to show you a mystery, and he goes and talks about the rapture of the church. Well, that mystery is a sod in Hebrew, and that's talking about something that's hidden in Scripture. And it meant to come out another time. And if you go back to Isaiah 26, starting in verse 19, you see the, the, the rapture, the dead and the Christ rising first. You see this, and we're hidden behind. We go into a room. We close the door behind us. That room is the Hadar. That's the wedding chamber that we are hidden behind. Um, so that we're hidden there for seven days. Even Jesus is going to go out and, and like, you know, um, take care of all his enemies on earth during tribulation. Because he can come and go. But the room, the, the bride has to be in that room for seven days, seven years of tribulation. You know, and you also see this wedding feast talk with the ten virgins. Five have a whale, five don't. Um, and again, there's so much more in that one, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna sum this one up. I want to make this short. See, that groom that went back to his father's house to prepare a place for him, for for us, had to be gone at least a year, but no longer than two. And this is Jewish custom. And understand that a lot of the Jewish customs um, or traditions and the things they followed are prophetic. Oh my goodness. Yeshua was crucified. So that year can be a thousand years. It could be that Christ had to be gone a thousand years and no more than 2,000 years. Okay. This is not something that I'm like saying, oh my goodness, this is an absolute positive fact that it has to happen. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. But it's very likely. Very likely. Because it also fits with what was said to the Jews, like in, after two days you'll be lifted up, uh, restored, and after two days, after two days, and the third day you will be, um, and the third day you'll be lifted up and live in the sight of the Lord forever. This could be where that day happens. But 38 day. Um, see, Christ went away in 38 day. He was not crucified in 33. He was not crucified on Friday. Check the longer video. He's crucified in 30 AD. That's actually 2930. So 
two days, 2,000 years is 2029, 20, 2030, and that rapture happens on Rosh Hashanah, so that's 2029. 20, I believe that a case can be made that the rapture must happen by 2029, 20, All right. regardless of when the rapture happens, even if that's not correct. And again, that's based on Hebraic um, customs and things. It's not based straight out of scripture. Even if it's wrong, if it's right, if the rapture is going to happen in September, the bottom line this year, the bottom line, clock's ticking, running out of time. You got to have Yeshua. You got to share him. You need to be bold. You need to be sharing him. Don't worry about what somebody's going to think. Worry about where they're going to be for eternity. That's far more important. All right. A lot of people, oh, I don't know what to say. What if they ask me a question? How about this? What if you're in his word? If you're in his word, he will give you the words. If you're in his word, he will give you the words to speak to somebody. Try this prayer. Father God, um, give me a chance to share your son with somebody today, Father God, and open up my eyes so I can see that chance. And Father God, um, give me your words to speak because my words are weak and useless. Give me your words, Father God, because your words have power in life. Amen. You think that's a prayer he'll answer? I do. God bless you, Maranatha. Maranatha. Hope to catch up in the clouds sometime soon. Take care.